That was my first time getting stung. <laughs> you got it on camera. <laughs> first time. All right. You'll see Man, her that like hurt. that. And then here I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Going to need some Benadryl later. <laughs> What's up everyone and welcome to another episode on the vlog where today I'm so pumped. I'm here with my friend and classmate Gabby Hi. from Western U. She's also another fourth year vet student and today we're going to find out what the buzz is about bees. Hi. I'm super pumped. We're here in SoCal. So, so Gabby, first of all, how did you get involved with honeybees? Um, so, it's a good question. Um, I've, it's kind of a weird story. I've always loved honey my entire life. I've actually like despised ketchup. So basically everything you put ketchup on, I put honey on. Um, so my whole life I've loved honey. I always have honey, a uh, bunch of honey in my cabinets. And when I was in undergrad and starting vet school, I realized that bees were going, they're endangered or they're going extinct and there's actually a problem. So I thought, what better way to get involved than and kind of help is by owning a beehive. So <laughs> what better way than nice. that? Yeah. Sweet. So, okay. So I have very little understanding about honeybees, but it seems like there's a role that veterinarians can play especially now since there have been some new changes with laws right. within the last several years. Can you expand a little more on that? Yeah, so um, as you know, the Veterinary Feed Directive, um, uh, the final rule on that took place in 2015. Um, but basically what this VFD means is um, any uh, food producing animal that would need uh, antibiotics in their feed um, or water, they would need a VFD, which is basically a, a veterinary prescription and you would, you would the veterinarian has to prescribe um, the antibiotic in the feed versus in the past, which I'm sure you know, what we used to be able to do or what farmers used to be able to do is go into a feed store and buy these medicated feeds um, and, and feed them without veterinary instruction. Because honeybees are a food producing animal, um, since they make honey for us, uh, we now are in charge of, um, you know, trying to keep them healthy and uh, veterinarians now have to create a relationship with the beekeepers. Um, so that's something that I, you know, got really interested in. Again, you know, I got interested in beekeeping and honeys and then when I learned that we now have to treat the bees, I thought, why not get involved? So, Sweet. Yeah. So how many bees do you own or do you so know? So I, I could give a guesstimate. So when I first started with the, the colony that I have right now, which we're we're gonna get into soon. Um, when I first started with them, we had I think it was about 10,000 bees and then a queen. So um, it's a lot of bees, and that's just a starter colony. Um, once the I established the hive in my box, um, the queen went out. She got mated, and she came back, and now she's making a ton more bees. So. It, sh it should get about up to 60,000 bees. <laughs> so that's how many I have in my backyard right now here in Orange County. Um, but uh, most wow. beekeepers will have up to, I mean, two hives is kind of the minimum. Um, I think they consider uh, you a backyard beekeeper if you have two to 10 hives. Um, and then they consider you a hobby beekeeper when you have a certain amount between, you know, above that. And then I think once you get above 100 hives, you're considered a commercial beekeeper. But I, I'm not sure about the numbers, but it's, there's, you know, different types of beekeepers. So I'm considered your backyard beekeeper. <laughs> wow, awesome. Yeah. Well, let's go. You want to go check it out? Check out some yeah, bees. let's go check it out. I'll uh, show you guys a little bit into the hive and kind of teach you guys a little bit of, you know, how the honey's made and different things like that. So let's go check out the health status of my hive and see what see what it's, what's going on. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. Cool. Okay. So I'm lighting my smoker. I have um, some burlap strips and there's some dead 
uh, leaves in there, a little bit of uh, old Trader Joe's bag, <laughs> um, some pine, some needles and different stuff like that to smoke the bees out. Um, basically what the smoker does is it blocks the communication between the bees. Um, although that kind of sounds a little cruel, it's just so that I can get into the hive and work with the bees and not get stung um, so they don't feel threatened. So if I didn't go in with the, uh, with the smoker and say, for example, I upset a bee or killed one of the bees on accident, which does happen, um, once that bee, the bee would have a pheromone that gets released and this would alert the other bees that there's something in danger. So we're basically blocking that communication so they don't feel threatened at all. Basically do this and then now it's going up into the hive and like out too, right? So mm -hmm. the bees that are out there, probably not many will come back in because now they don't have the pheromones going. There they are. <laughs> Welcome to the hive. So we'll check out the first frame. There shouldn't be really anything oh, anything on here. Um, this top box, this blue one up top is kind of a newer box. So this is just the foundation right here that I already have on the frame. Um, it just helps them kind of build their colony a little bit faster. Um, you can get foundationless frames too with just this wire that goes through it and they'll create all of the comb from scratch. Um, you'll see in the next few that they still do create, they still have comb on top of this, but um, without this part, um, they would do it all from scratch. So it's just kind of a foundation, especially since I'm new, um, it's easier for me to, to build my colony up. So there's the comb. Can you see the difference between the two? Like this is actually no comb over here and that's on the left side. On this side you can see and you can, if you can zoom in, you can actually see the nectar that they have in there too, right in the cells. This is pretty cool. Whoa. Yeah. Um, oh, and this side, so they kind of capped the, this is how they, when you see that like um, more opaque part that's them capping the honey or the nectar um, so that means that it's ready so they've capped it and kind of stored it away um, which means it's full and they can dig into that in the winter for when they need some food so the next few that we're gonna see are gonna be more capped honey actually just so this one has a good mix too so the, the queen definitely could be up here up on the top box um, so I'm just kind of scanning from side to side to see if I can find the queen. Um, she's been here, but probably not recently. The way I know that is because a lot of these um, cells that the, the bees are around um, either have capped honey or they're capping the brood. That is busy in there. Yeah, it is. <laughs> So basically when I, it's time to harvest the honey, which the honey flow is the most in the fall. Um, some people harvest in some of the late summer and in the fall. Um, but when I wanna harvest, I'm gonna basically scrape off the top layer here and I, it's called uncapping the honey. So I'm taking off that opaque looking layer that's covering the honey. Um, and then you put these frames into it's basically a centrifuge and um, they'll be like laying like this or like this and they'll go around in the centrifuge and the honey that I uncapped will drain to the bottom and then you can like pour it out of a spigot. This problem, this frame, if I'm gonna have to guess, it probably weighs eight pounds. Like wow. it's pretty heavy. Like I'm, I, at least five pounds. I could be exaggerating, but they, they get really heavy when they're full of honey. Queen shouldn't be on here. She should be making babies somewhere. So I'm not really looking for her right now, but I am keeping my eye out. So I, I just got stung. Um, there's a stinger in my 
right just in there. The bee's kind of freaking out. Oh, oh and there it goes. My. So, so basically what just happened is the bee stung me and then when it flew out, it eviscerated itself. So that's, it's like in, insides. So now it's going to go die. So I have to take that out because that kind of hurts a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that was my first time getting stung. <laughs> You got it on camera. <laughs> First time. All right. You'll see Man, her that like hurt. that. And then here I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Gonna need some Benadryl later. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Well, it was Well, wow, you're to very calm during that, though. I didn't realize it was stuck in your finger. I, know, I was like, and it's in my finger. <laughs> So I was watching this thing and it said if you leave the, if you don't like flick the bee off and you leave it in your finger, sometimes they can work themselves out and not eviscerate themselves so they can stay alive. So that's what I, that's why I didn't freak out. Oh. Because I kind of just let it sit there and I, I hope, I was hoping that it'd be okay, but he, she flung away and ripped out her guts. So. <laughs> okay, so here's a cool one. So this one is full of this is capped brood um and at the bottom you can see and then kind of on the right you can actually if you can zoom in you can mm -hmm. see the larva in there um yeah. so they're working hard right now to cap that so that those larva can grow up to be little bees okay so i'm putting some sugar water um, or basically sh syrup um, just to supplement the bees. I don't really need to do it anymore because they have their own nectar and honey. But in the beginning when I first started the hive, I needed to have um, a supplement because this was basically like the honey supplement or the nectar supplement. Um, so now I just put a little bit of it um, and they drink that and I also add essential oils to it So I usually add something like lavender or um, Lemongrass or something that they really like and usually the days that I put the essential oils in it They drink that so fast like within a half a day versus like a two-day period. So this will give them a few days um, they Usually drink it really fast, but um, it's just to help supplement them and make them get a little bit stronger okay, So but. here's the big question. How is honey made? All right, so honey basically, in the most basic sense, is made by the scavenger bee will go out and they go get, collect nectar and pollen from the flowers, okay. right? So they go out and they store it in one of their stomachs. They actually have two stomachs, so they store it in their little stomach, um, bring it back to the hive, and one of the worker bees basically receives what they went out and got. So they receive the pollen, they receive the nectar, and um, they will take that. They basically regurgitate it. They have an enzyme that will make that into basically honey. So they regurgitate that honey from the nectar and the pollen into one of the cells or the honey comb. Um, and then eventually what happens is they dehydrate that. So they take, they, they will fan their wings, which is so crazy. They fan their wings really fast and they dehydrate or let the water evaporate from the cell. And once the, all the water is gone and it's dehydrated, you're left with honey and they cap it with their wax on top. We need to try some honey now. Oh, heck yeah, yeah. let's go get it. <laughs>